everyone and welcome to another exciting edition of The No Zone. Oh yes, I love to have fun while I learn. Oh yes, and this is the place where we learn as we have fun. I'm Charlie. And I'm Marara. Wait, Charlie, aren't you going to introduce us to our new friend? I was actually just going to get to that. Thank you, Marara. Now, as you can see, we have a brand new member of the No Zone family. I will let her introduce herself. Hi everyone, it is so great to be here. I'm Janet. Welcome Janet. We're so glad to have you. Now why don't we get straight into the show. We have Junction Teens and Bus Stories. And we have Hot Numbers and Cool Words. Career Zone out there and a whole lot more. So let's get this party started right now. Well, is it time to go and meet our studio guests? Yes, it is. Let's go and find out who's waiting for us in the Chill Out Zone. Hello, everyone. Hello. Now, before we begin, why don't we start by saying a big hello to our new friend, Janet, who is joining us here on the No Zone. Hello, Janet. Thank you everyone, I feel so much at home being here with you all. Hey, speaking of home, that's what our topic is all about today. <coughs> uh, ooh, ooh. Uh, sorry I'm late. Mm. <laughs> I stopped by the learning zone to take some measurements. Measurements for what? Well, I've been thinking about making some renovations to the studio. Um, what sort of changes? Well, maybe a swimming pool? <clears throat> yeah, that's an interesting idea, but right now we need to tell everyone at home what our buzzwords for today are. What are our buzzwords? Friends. Get. Repair. Paint. Now, all of these words teach us about the home, so look out for them throughout the episode and in the next program. For now, let's go to Makutano and find out what the Junction teens are up to. Thanks, Nita, for the juice. The Junction teens are really grateful. Where are James and Brian? They are late. They're probably arguing as usual, and Ami shouldn't be able to come today. She's going to visit her uncles in town. More for us. Hey guys, I saw these beautiful curtains at my auntie's place. I would like to have curtains here, just like a real home. No way. Why not? This is our home. We should make it more cozy. You can't stay up for me. Question. question. I hate this bit. I hope it's not a difficult question. Convert 10 liters to milliliters and 10 liters to deciliters. Got it. One liter is equal to 1,000 milliliters. So to find out how much 10 liters is, you multiply 10 by 1,000, which is 10,000 milliliters. Ha. If you aren't thinking about a mission, you wouldn't be so dumb. Can't say that. Let's see if you get yours. You'll see. One liter is equal to 10 deciliters. If you multiply 10 by 10, you get 100. Correct. Correct. Whoa, that took you long enough. Sometimes they even wonder if you're awake during math. Hey, I got that first. No, you didn't. I had it first. Now leave. Leave, no. Now see what you've done. Because of your greediness, now you poured the juice. So I would have just see. drunk it myself uh. instead of you. Now look what you've done. Eh? Nita had brought this juice for all of us. And why were you fighting? Yet there was enough for everyone. It's his fault. It's not my fault. It's I'm your tired fault. of both of you. You've clearly messed up a perfect day. No, it's because of you. Yes. James, Brian. I can't hang around you two guys if you're always fighting. I'm even starting to wonder if you two are really friends because yeah. real friends don't behave the way you guys do. Oh, come on. This is just harmless fun. You know, it may seem like fun, but one day you'll take it too far. You two need to stop acting like kids. Nita, thanks for the juice. Maybe tomorrow you'll enjoy it without any drama. Okay, I'll bring cake tomorrow. Sounds like a bribe. An apology would be better. 
I'll bring crisps and popcorn. Apart from cake, I'll bring biscuits. And I'm sorry. Me too. If you two can't hang around together, then you can't hang around us. Whatever. You're jealous. I have better things to do. Hey, like girls. No. Not again. This is like a rerun of a bad Mexican soap. You see? Guys, look. What happened to our hideout? We've been locked from our hideout. But why? Wait a minute. Yesterday I saw a man talking on the phone. He was looking at our hideout. Listen. I want the gate repaired and painted. Also, the fence needs to be painted. Well, when I get back, it better all be done, or else you're fired. Uh, excuse me, sir, but are you the one who's put this piece of wood on our door? I think you made a mistake. You see, this is our hideout. Well, I don't know how to say it, kids, but uh, I'm about to buy this land, and when I do, your hideout will have to be demolished. can't be happening. We can't let him take our hideout. But what do you suggest we do? Maybe we can talk to him and tell him what the hideout means to all of us. Listen, I think we should talk to Mabuki. Maybe he can help us. But if all of us go, what if the man returns and the hideout is demolished? Some of us will stay and defend the hideout, then some will go to Mabuki. I'll, I'll stay. stay. I'll, I'll go. go. I'll stay. Actually, both of you stay. Why? No. Wait, wait, wait. Hey, what are you doing? We no. need to defend our hideout. No. And Come you on. too need to stop acting like kids. No, this... Hopefully, this time we'll do just that. Oh. There's no way I'm saying tight to him. Wait. No way. And I'll remain, just in case. This is all because of you. You're the one. You're the one. Uh, you're the big mouth. No, you're the one who always wants to go and stay, 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 stay everywhere. Everywhere I go, you just like following me. Our home isn't for four walls. It's the people that you hang out with that matter. Even if you'll be hanging out in the field, I'd rather that than not having you guys at all. The livery of the housewives will be late, but not to worry. As uh, soon as they arrive, I'll let you know. But I am starting a new service. I found someone who can mow the grass very well at an affordable price. Yes. All right. All right. Uh, I'll talk to you later. What can I do for you today? Well... Something the matter? Mr. Mabuki, it's about our hideout. Yes, we've been locked out from it. Oh, well, that's horrible. And the person who's been the land has said that as soon as the land is bought, he'll have to demolish our hideout. Please, can you help us? It's our hideout. I didn't want you to find out this way until it was finalized. You see, the person buying the land wants to use the whole space and... Uh, well, 
I've been looking for another place for you to have your hideout. Now what will we do? Oh, well, I'm afraid I can't help you. You see, once the process is finalized, uh, he can do whatever he wants with the land. But I'll keep looking for another place for you to have your hideout. Ah, the more you try to get loose, the more you get close. This won't work. It's like a nightmare. Can you think I like this? What's wrong with both of you? <laughs> His one was acting funny yesterday. I was just playing around in Zen. If, if you weren't thinking about a mission, you wouldn't be so dumb. dumb. You can't, can't say, say that. that. Let's see if you get, get yours. yours. You'll see. Then what? Nothing. Uh, the neighborhood is really friendly. I like the atmosphere. Oh yeah, of course, sure. I'd love to have my homestead here. I yeah, can't wait for you to see it. Okay, see you soon. What's going on? You know, that's dangerous. This is our hideout, and you're about to destroy it. And that's not fair. And we are not leaving. We are staying here to stop you from demolishing it. Yeah. This is our hideout. Yes, and you have to demolish this hideout. It's ours. It's a hideout. You're going to demolish it. Yeah. You're going to stay here. No, demolish it. our home. You can't just tear it down. Mabuki will defend us, right? I'm sorry. Once I buy this land, I have plans to make it into a homestead. My family will live here. And uh, I have a daughter about your age. I'd like you to meet her. Whatever. Brian, respect your elders. Excuse me, sir. Can you at least say goodbye to the hideout and take our things? Sure. I'll open it for you. I can't believe this. We've lost the hideout. No more fun time. No more passwords. No more junction teams. You know, the hideout was like my second home. It was the only place my troubles couldn't find me. Where are James and Brown? I saw them running after the man. Oh no. They have made things worse. I've surely lost it. We have to convince him. Let's just go. Hello, boys. What can we do for you? Um, we know that you've already made plans, and what we say to you may not convince you, but we'll try. Our hideout isn't much. It may look like a scrap to you, just pieces glued together. But to us, it's like a second home, where lessons have been learned, and where we often do our homework together. And most importantly, it's where friendships have been made. Please don't take that away from us. So what did the man say? You did talk to him, right? Is our hideout safe? Knowing you two, you probably made things worse. I can't believe it. Wait a minute. This is just a hideout. The Junction Teens aren't the hideout. Yeah. It's me. It's you. It's all of us. Losing the hideout may be hard, but that's life. And I'm still happy because I have my friends. I realized that I hurt your feelings. That's why you've been fighting a lot. What I said about you being dumb, 
it wasn't right. And I'm sorry. Come on, guys. Let's just pack our things and go. Where are you going? We were just packing our things. We don't want them demolished. No, you don't have to pack your things. Your hideout is safe. What happened? I've looked at the plants and uh, this land is quite big. My homestead won't reach it, so there's no need to demolish your hideout. Well, like Superman, I saved the day. Say what? All you did was stand there like a piece of wood. I'm going to do all the talking. That's it. If you two are going to start acting like kids, you'd better leave the hideout. You don't need to be harsh. Look, what you two did together saved the hideout. And we're all proud of that. The junction teams rock. Yay! What a great episode. Oh, yes. And I'm glad that the Junction Teens managed to save their hideout. That's right. It was so wonderful to see James and Brian working together. So, what buzzwords did you hear? Friends. Get. Repair. Paint. You know, I've been thinking. Yes. Now, if their hideout had been demolished, then the Junction Teens could have built a new one. You know, one maybe with a swimming pool. No, 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 no. But think about it. Maybe they worked so hard to save their hideout because they like their hideout just the way it is. I think I know what that means. It's time to join Teacher Pendo as she helps us with our English skills. It's time for cool words. Hello and welcome to Cool Words. Now to start us off, I am going to show you two sits. Now who can tell me the difference between these two? Yes, Omondi? One is a chair and the other is a stool. Aha, uh -huh, very good, nice try. But I'm looking for a bit more detail. Now look at the number of legs. Who wants to give it a try? Yes, Omondi? One has three legs and the other has four legs. Aha, very good. Now, this is a three-legged stool and this is a four-legged chair. Now, three-legged is an adjective made up of two other words. It is a compound adjective and tells us what kind of seat we are talking about. Now, what would we call the following using compound adjectives? You can try this at home. Now, a house with four rooms. Yes, Cynthia? A four-roomed house. Very good. What about a man with gray hair? Yes, Susan? A gray-haired man. Very good. And a sheep with a black head? Yes, Omondi? A black-headed sheep. Aha, excellent. What about a person who uses his or her left hand for writing? Oh, oh teacher Pendo. Yes, Marara. A left-handed person. Excellent. And a broom with a short handle? Yes, Pharrell. A short-handled broom. Very good. Well done, all of you. Now remember, you can use a compound adjective when describing characters in your composition writing. Now let's move on to something else that can also help you with your composition writing. Punctuation. Now, what should I write when I want to show that a dress belongs to Anne? Yes, Susan? Shapendo, you could say Anne's dress. Aha, very good. Now notice how Susan punctuated her statement using an apostrophe plus an S. Now this shows possession. Now to make a singular noun show possession, we usually add an apostrophe and S like this. This is how we show possession. Now let's look at another example. A book belonging to the boy will be written as the boy's book. Wait, now, Chapendo. Yes, Marara. What about when the noun is plural? 
when the noun is plural, now that's a very good question. When the noun is plural, ending with an S, you show possession by simply adding the apostrophe after the S. Now, books belonging to the boys will be written like this. The boys' books. The boys' books. Okay, now there are also plural nouns which do not end with S. Now, who can give us examples of such plurals? Yes, Susan? Women is the plural of woman. Good. Now, to show possession with such plurals, you just add apostrophe S, just as we do with a singular noun. For example, clothes for women would be written as women's clothes. Now, let's do an exercise to test whether we've all understood this. Now, on the board here, I have some phrases, and I'd like you to punctuate them to show possession. The first one, the snout of a pig. Yes, Omondi? The pig's snout. Very good, the pig's snout. Let's put that here. The next one, the trousers belonging to Joe. Yes, Cynthia? Joe's trousers. Joe's trousers, very good. Joe's trousers. And what about shoes for men? Yes, Susan? Men's shoes. Men's shoes, absolutely right men's shoes and this next one flowers belonging to my neighbors yes pharrell my neighbors flowers correct my neighbors flowers and what about the last one toys belonging to the children Ooh, it's Japendo. yes marara the children's toys absolutely right the children's toys well done, all of you. Now you all managed to punctuate correctly. And how did you get on at home? I hope you sailed through very easily. Now, well done, all of you. And with that, we've come to the end of another exciting episode of Cool Words. Wow, Teacher Pendo, that was a great lesson. Thank you very much. You're most welcome. I hope you also enjoyed the lesson. Now though, let's go and link up with my speedy on Out There. Welcome to Masai Land. This is Kajado County. It might be the most dry area we have around, but I love Masai Land. The people here are friendly and their well-preserved culture is amazing. My friends here tells me that even though the people here are from various homesteads, they share the same neighborhood as they are all under one compound generally marked by a fence around them and a gate. But every day in the evening, they all meet up to have a nice time as they wind up the day discussing and planning for the next day. But the song and dance is one thing they hold dear. Look, <laughs> they're all like one big family. I love their way of dressing. Isn't this beautiful? Given a choice, I would love to spend more time here. And so I make my trips here once in a while. I'm having such a good time. But one thing for sure is we are all tired and it's almost dark now. Look, even the cattle herders are back from the grazing fields. The cows should be able to give lots of milk tomorrow. <laughs> Since I've made numerous friends here, I might as well hang around, spend the night and enjoy the company of these wonderful people. My friend Rachel invited me to visit her today at their home, as she is not in school. Come on, come, let's go and learn some more from these interesting friends of mine. Rachel tells me that at this point of the day, most of the members of her family are out taking their chores but she will take us around the homestead anyway. Unlike the contemporary houses, Maasai houses are called manyatas. 
These are shelters made using wooden sticks to lay the foundation and then cow dung is smeared just like cement to give it a smooth look. I'm told that all this is done with no machines at all, just the work of your hands. During the day, the low muddy manyatas keep very low temperatures making it a very cool place for one to relax when it's really hot. But do they have any windows? Let's look around. Let's find out from inside. Wow, it's so cool. But it's also very dark. But not for Rachel. She's even going on with her cooking. But how are you able to see in this darkness, Rachel? Well, she tells me it's not dark at all for her, as this single hole from outside is bringing enough light for her. I must then say, then it's an interesting house. Oh, manyata. <laughs> I guess if I hang around for a while, I'll also get around and be able to operate around just like Rachel. Well, thank you Rachel and family for your company. I still have a long journey home. So, till next time, bye! That was actually a really educational trip. Yeah, and I learned quite a lot. Great. Now, it's time for Marara's favorite part of the show. What, what? Is it time for dinner? Not quite. It starts with the word big. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I know what it is. I know it, it's... it's time for us to test our math skills. Yes, it's time for the big three. Yay! Great! Let's get on with it. Marara, you're so excited. Well, I hope you're all as excited as Marara is. Now. Nah. This game is all about numbers. There are two teams, there are three sums, and there are five seconds to solve the sum. Now, whichever team solves the most sums correctly gets to take these wonderful books back to their school courtesy of our friends, the Longhorn Publishers. You must answer the question and write your answer on the answering pads provided within five seconds or else your answer is not going to count even if it's correct. Now, are the rules clear? Yes. And as for you at home, don't be left out. Try and keep up and see how you do. Marara, are you ready with the timer? Yes, the clock is set. Here comes that first sum. 10 multiplied by 3. Minus 8 plus 4 divided by 2 is what? Start the clock! Time's up, time's up, time's up, time's up, time's up, time's up. Time is up, let's go for the next sum. 18, take away 4, multiplied by 2, plus 2. Divide by 6 equals... Start the clock! Stop, 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 stop the clock, stop the clock. There's one sum left. I hope you're doing well at home. 14 plus 4 multiplied by 2 divided by 6 is what? Start the clock! That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Game is over. Stop the clock. <laughs> okay, let's see how everyone did. Now, team A, show me your answer for the first sum. Mm, it's a blank. Mm. Team B, 13. All right, yeah. let's solve this sum together. 10 times 3 minus 8 plus 4 divided by 2. Wow! Meaning team B is correct? Yeah. Alright, show
show me team A, show me your answer for the next sum. 36, team B, 5. All right, Charlie. 18 minus 4 times 2 plus 2 divided by 6. It's five. Oh, five <laughs> Congratulations, five. Team B, with two answers correct. All right, let's move on to the third sum. Team A, show me your answer, please. It's a six. Team B, one. Wow, Charlie. Oh. 14 plus four times two, and then divided by six. Six. Yeah. Six. Ah, okay, congratulations to you, Team B. Meaning, Team B, you're the winners for today's show. Congratulations! Well, well, congratulations. Now, no need to feel bad, Team A. You need to realize that Team B just got the edge. Now, how did you do at home? Did you do as well as Team B? I hope so. Now, if you've enjoyed playing the big three, Make sure that you join us later today so that we can have fun with Teacher Pendo on Hot Numbers. For now, that marks the end of the first half of the show. Well, Janet, yes. are you enjoying yourself? Totally, I had so much fun. Well, we're glad to hear that, Janet, because we still have another half hour of the show lined up, which includes Wild Zone and Bus Stories. Career Zone and Hot Numbers. So stay tuned for all that and much more coming up on The No Zone. more fun field action right here on the No Zone. Now to kick us off, why don't you remind our friends at home what today's buzzwords are? Paint, get, repair, paint. Excellent. All the buzzwords teach us more about the home. Oh yes, and I can't wait to renovate the studio. <laughs> um, are you still thinking about the swimming pool? Oh yes, and I think it would look great. Actually, Janet, when you think about it, a swimming pool would be really great. I mean, in this heat, you need something uh, 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 to swim Charlie, in. Charlie, right? Charlie, Charlie. Yeah? I can't swim. Interesting. He can't swim. He can't, and he wants to put in a swimming pool. He's a genius. Anyway, why don't we go into the wild and find out more about Mariah's animal friends who can or cannot swim. It's time for the wild zone. Welcome to the Wild Zone. Now, in today's episode, we'll be looking at how rain has encouraged growth and new life. The male impala is checking his harem, his young ones, as they all set off from the safety of the lake, back up the Osarian corridor. The orgo buzzard from his vantage point above the lake watches the pelicans move on across the trees, searching for more water. Down there, the giraffes are also leaving the lake. Could our female be getting some attention after her loss? The recent rain has produced all sorts of new food in the very green grass. Flowers now decorate the hedges. A prickly pear, a reminder that the animals on the move are about to meet people again. But the people, and being on a journey, doesn't deter them. The impala always seem to have family distractions. There's a lot of chasing, calling and tail waving. That can lead to a mass jumping about. Impala males spend a lot of time and energy collecting and maintaining groups of females. Something's up. He warns his wives. It's a jackal, 
He was not interested. His mates are playing. The zebras are nuzzling. As ever, the impalas are competing. And two male giraffes are necking. A ritual fight, probably to establish dominance. And then come the inevitable. The impala's efforts paid off. So did the zebras. Yes, they're back at the zebra crossing, quite relaxed alongside the traffic. But this cyclist is going to have an interesting ride to work. It's a giraffe crossing. One becomes two. Becomes three. Then four. Then five. How do you move five giraffes? He drops something in the fray. They're behind you. They just keep on coming. After all, it is their corridor, their right of way. In fact, should the flower farms fail because of lack of lake water, this investment in wildlife may prove invaluable. To see wild animals so confiding, so easily, and so close is a privilege. But they can be hazards, as we've seen. In the wild zone, next time we'll be looking at how during the migration period, the biggest problem the wildlife face is man-made. Oh, you know, I really enjoyed that episode. So did I. Now, did you all enjoy that episode? Yes! Excellent. Now, if you would like to know more about Marara and all of his animal friends, you should become a member of the No Zone Club. That's right. Just text the word zone with your name and address to... 5606. And you will become an instant No Zone Club member. And don't forget to ask your parents to help you with a text. I know what that means. It's time for... Hot Numbers! Hello everyone and welcome to Hot Numbers. Hello, Hello Today we are going to learn about volume. Now can anyone tell me what this is? Oh, oh, oh Yes, Marara. A, a box. Uh, is it a present? Can I open it? Please, please, please. <laughs> Not quite, Marara. Someone give us a try. Yes, a Cheng? It is a cube. Exactly. Cube. Okay. Now, using mathematical terms, what would we say a cube is? Now, what shapes are this we have here? Yes, Irene? Square. Rectangle and a triangle. Very good. Now we call these shapes 2D shapes because they are flat. They have two dimensions. That is the height and the width. Okay. Now what do you think we would call this cube? Oh, oh, oh teacher Pendo. Yes, Mara. I remember mm -hmm. 3D shapes because <laughs> they have three dimensions. That is right. Now a cube is a 3D shape. It has the height, the length and the width. Okay. Now we are going to learn how to find its volume. Volume is a form of measurement. Now to measure the volume of this <coughs> cube, we would have to multiply the length by the width by the height. Now, can somebody tell me how we go about measuring this cube's volume? Yes, Chuang? We will multiply one meter by one meter by one meter. Mm -hmm. Good. Now, the volume of this cube is one meter times one meter multiplied by one meter, which gives us one cubic meter. Now, always remember to write the three, uh, 
on top of the M, which represents cubic meter and shows that we are measuring volume. Now we learned how to write squared when we were doing area. Now when doing volume, we call it cubed. Now a quick question, how many centimeters are in a meter? Yes, Michael? 100 centimeters make a meter. Very good. So if we change these centimeters, it will be 100 centimeters multiplied by 100 centimeters multiplied by 100 centimeters, which gives us 1 million cubic centimeters. Therefore, 1 cubic meter equals to 1 million cubic centimeters. Uh, uh, teacher Pendo? Yes, Marara? So one cubic meter is exactly the same as one million cubic centimeters. Yes, Marara. Now, if we have a cube measuring three meters, what is the volume in cubic meters? Yes, a chain? Three by three meters by three meters times three meters. Aha, uh -huh, very good, which gives us? Uh, um, that is three times three, which is nine. Nine times three is 27. Oh, yeah, 27 cubic meters. Very good, Marara, but remember to put up your hand next time. Now, what about in cubic centimeters? What is the answer in cubic centimeters? Irene, do you want to give it a try? First, we convert three meters into centimeters by multiplying by 100. Then you'll get 300. You'll multiply 300 times 300 times 300. Then you'll get the answer as 27 million cubic centimeters. Very good. Now, how else can we convert it into cubic centimeters? Yes, Chong? We will multiply 27 cubic meter by a, a, a million. So the answer we get is 27 million cubic centimeters. Well done, all of you. You're catching on very, very quickly. Now, let's see if you will get this next bit just as fast. Now, sometimes we have cubes that are not equal in size, and these are called cuboids. Now, what is its equivalent as a 2D shape? Yes, Michael? A rectangle. Aha, that's correct. Now, to measure the volume of a cuboid, we use the same formula as we used for the cube. We will multiply the length by the width by the height. Now, if our cuboid measures 4 meters by 2 meters by 5 meters, what is the volume of our cuboid? Yes, Michael. 40 cubic meters. Uh, very good. Now, what about in cubic centimeters? Uh, uh, teacher Pendo? Yes, Marara. I think we multiply that by 1 million. Aha, uh -huh, yes. Or we change the meters to centimeters and get 400 centimeters multiplied by 200 centimeters multiplied by 500 centimeters, which gives us? 40 million cubic centimeters. Well done, everyone. Now, as a special assignment for you at home, look for a cuboid or a cube-shaped object. It could be a tin from the kitchen or a toothpaste box, anything. Measure it with a ruler and write down the length, width, and height and find the volume. Well, thank you very much for joining us and remember to join us next time for more Hot Numbers. Oh, Teacher Pendo? Yes, Marara? I'll use my cereal box when I get home. It's a cuboid, isn't it? Yes, it is. And I see you've been paying attention. Oh, yes. Wait, <laughs> is it time for some career advice? Yes, it is. Now, let's see what job is being featured this week on Career Zone. a little about yourself. Okay, my name is Victor Mahinda and I'm an architect and an interior designer. How did you find yourself in this line of work? First of all, I, as I told you, I wished on a star. Yeah, so a falling star and I worked towards understanding what it was. And as I grew older, I, I read about it, you know, and yes, it's something that I really, really wanted to do, yeah. Did you need any qualifications, training or experience for your job? I had to study architecture first. I had to go through the normal school years, primary and secondary. 
and then I joined university for six years. Yeah, and then after six years, you do two years under someone, under a professional, and then you can venture out on your own. There's no end to the learning process. So you start by making lots of basic mistakes, and then you continue learning and going with it. Please tell us what you do in a typical day. Okay, so you first, the typical day is, it's, it's, it's part of a cycle, which I shall describe shortly. It's, uh, so you, you begin with meeting a client, and they describe to you and give you a, what is called a brief. A brief is a description of what the client wishes to build or put up, and so once you have that brief, then the next step is designing for the client so that they like it. So you put it in, in uh, drawings and pictures and, um, and, and, and explain. And these drawings and pictures are usually accompanied by what it will cost to put up the, the, to put up the, the structure. And then after that, then you will be putting up the structure. And so you'll be supervising on site. Um, looking at what fundies are doing and uh, guiding them on how to put it up properly, bringing down some, putting uh, up others. And then after that, uh, uh, th that's about it. So a typical day will involve one of those things happening, either meeting a client or designing only or supervising on site or picking up materials, finishes with a client. Yes. What are the main challenges of your job? It's hard to sell an idea to a client <clears throat> because uh, our drawings are ideas you know so the client mostly wants to see something physical so that's hard to sell but with time then you're able to take them to say work that you've done and then they are they're able to believe that you can you can do something equally or better for them the other challenge would be working with the uh, fundies because sometimes they are not very skilled so there'll be a lot of mistakes a lot of bringing down work, which is expensive for the client and also takes a lot of time to complete a project. In your opinion, what skills or characteristics does one need in this line of work? A willingness to work with people because you, you, you meet a lot of different people every day, uh, uh, from clients to the workers on site, the fundies, and then also to uh, suppliers of materials, you know, uh, shopkeepers, uh, manufacturers. So you need to be able to, to, to love to work with people and interact with people. What advice would you give anyone interested in your line of work? If you're looking to, to join this line of work, it's beautiful and it's nice, but it's a lot of hard work. So you have to be prepared for the hard work bit. Um, then again, um, yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty much it. You just have to be able to to stay the cause, just keep up the good fight to the end and be patient, yeah, patient. All right, um, now it's time for something a little different. It's time for us to put our thinking caps on for our ultimate spelling challenge. It's time for Spell It. <laughs> Animal, Animal, chapter, building, narrow, building. respect, Meter. respect. Deep. vegetable, work, work, work. work. Spell it. Achieng, Michael, and Susan, you are about to step out of the shadows and into the spotlight to compete for the title of today's Nose On Spelling Champion. Now, the winner will walk away with their very own Nose On Dictionary. Each contender has just 30 seconds to spell correctly as many words as possible. If you want to hear the word again, simply say repeat and the word will be repeated for you. Each word is worth one point. So the more words you spell correctly, the higher your chances of winning. Are the rules clear? All right, Achen, you are up first. Please step onto the spelling zone. Achen, your 30 seconds start now. Home, H-O-M-E, clean. Repeat, clean. C L E A N Fence F E N C E Garden G A R D E N Construction C O N C T R U N Decorate D E C O R A T E Building 
B U. Hands up. Well done, Achy. Well done. All right, Michael, you are up next. Please step onto the spelling zone. Michael, your thirty seconds start now. Fix. F I X. Repair. R E P A I R. Get. C E G E T. Homestead. H O M A H O M E S T E A D. Cuttings. C U R T A N. Renovate. Repeat. Renovate. R E N O V A T E. Painting. P A I N T I N G. On to the on to the last one, Susan. Please step onto the spelling zone. Susan, your thirty seconds start now. Cut. C U T. Mend. Mend. M A D E. Draw. D R A. W horse pipe horse pipe h o r s e p i n e district d i s t r i c t water w a t e r household how hands up well done susan well done now that was an intense Round of spelling, and I can now reveal the scores. In third place, with four points, we have Susan. Let's give her a big round of applause, please. Well done. That leaves us with Aching and Michael. Michael, you spelt the word "get" correctly. The word that Janet gave you was "gate." Achieng, you did not finish spelling the word construction correctly, which means that today the Nozone Spelling Challenge has two winners. So congratulations, Achieng and Michael. Let's give a round of applause. Yay! <laughs> Congratulations to the both of you. You are today's Nozon Spelling Champion. Show everyone at home your dictionary. Another round of applause. Yay! Yes, congratulations to you, Achieng and Michael, and a very well done to you, Susan, for spelling as many words correctly. And a warm thank you to our friends at the Longhorn Publishers for providing us with the prizes so that nobody goes home empty-handed. Hmm. And after such an intense competition, I think we all deserve a very relaxing break with a story. Oh, yes, we do. Now, why don't we go and meet up with our friend Spex, Boomba, Zawadi, and the rest of the clan for another exciting adventure on the bus stories. <laughs> Just talking nonsense. Why? Girls are allowed to play football. They shouldn't. Football is for boys. Yes. By the way, you should stick to netball and volleyball. Actually, women's football is popular. Ah, you're out of your minds. Who talks about women's football? I expect. Actually, even there is a football World Cup for women. Yes, there is. I watched the last one. It's bad enough that women are playing basketball. <laughs> Don't they have some cleaning and washing to do? You guys are such sexists. And worse than that, you're stereotyping. What? Me? I don't judge anyone. Let me tell you, sometimes it can be very dangerous to judge people on their appearances. Oh boy, I feel a story coming up. <laughs> Let them give it their best shot. So, one day, the magical bus went flying through the skies. Suddenly, the bus engine began to stutter. 
Chuma struggled to control the vehicle. Bumba, Specs, Raha and Zawadi were panicking. Even Tchameri looked a bit scared. But using all his skills, Chuma managed to land the bus safely. As they looked out, the magical force saw a strange landscape. There were trees and houses, but no people. Chuma needed a spanner to try and mend the bus. So the gang volunteered to look for help, and they left the bus ready to explore. The gang looked around the deserted area, but the place was still eerily quiet. Meanwhile, the sun was beating down and the gang began to tire in the heat, feeling sweaty and exhausted. Suddenly, they saw two groups of people. On one side of the street was a group of lighter-skinned people. And on the other side, some darker-skinned people. Raha and Zawadi approached the lighter-skinned people and asked for their help. They needed water and a spanner for Chuma. The lighter-skinned people opened their arms and welcomed them. We'd be delighted to help, they said. Meanwhile, Bumba and Specs approached the darker-skinned people. Explaining their problem, the darker-skinned people offered to help as well. The magical four huddled together and had to choose which group to ask for help. But which group would they choose? Well, obviously, they're going to move towards the lighter-skinned people. Well, I thought you said that you didn't judge people by their looks. We don't, but given the choice, you would. Everybody would. I mean, who wouldn't? Well, they soon discovered that they'd maybe spent too much time on the decision making. So what happened? So they followed the lighter skinned people to their house. The house looked amazing, with a beautiful garden complete with a fountain. The first thing they did was drink lots of water that their hosts offered. The group started to feel drowsy. The water was poisoned. Suddenly, the house where they were became a fortress. Bars appeared on the windows and doors. They were locked in. Specs tried to read their mind using his magical spectacles, but they weren't working. Boomba tried to make himself invisible, but it didn't work. Raha tried to scream, but she'd lost her voice. And when Zawadi tried to run, her legs were stuck and she couldn't move. The host started to laugh manically. Ha ha ha! And they were breathing fire from their mouths. The magical four were doomed. No way, what happened? Oh, it's obvious how they escaped. Yeah, this story is so predictable. Really? Then why didn't you finish it? I, I could, but you know, it wouldn't be fair. Yeah, it's your story, Zawadi. You should finish it. Yeah, finish your story, Zawadi. Okay. So the gang were trapped. And whatever their hosts had planned for them wasn't good. As they trembled in fear, there was suddenly a loud noise from outside, a banging on the door. The fire-breathing people walked to the door. But as they did so, a horse was pushed through the window. Suddenly, a large jet of water burst through, soaking the fire breathers and pushing them so hard against the wall, they were unconscious. The door sprang open, and the group that Boomba and Speck talked to were there. They helped the magic four escape from the house and escorted them out of the town. Before they left, they handed over a spanner so Chuma could fix the bus. Specs wanted to know about the fire-eating people. The rescuers explained that the reason the town was deserted, whenever anyone new arrived, they went with the lighter skinned people and were never seen again. But where did they come and rescue them? Well, Specs and Bumba were so polite, they wanted to save them. The magic four ran to the bus giving Chuma the spanner. Soon the bus was taking off and they were on their way home. They'd had a lucky escape. Are you trying to say that we should not trust light-skinned people? No! The point of this story is that you should not judge people by appearances. Exactly. You can't just decide how you're going to feel about somebody because of their gender or tribe. 
You should look at each and every person individually. Oh, I get it. So, are you going to play football with us? Um, okay, I suppose we can try. But I hope you're not better than us. <laughs> of course we are. That was a great story. I know, I had so much fun. And that is the perfect way for us to end our show today. Now, thank you so much for coming in to help us with the show. I had such a blast. Yeah, and for you at home, it was great for you to join us. Make sure you come again on Saturday where we will be having a brand new show. And if you want to contact us, just ask your parents to send us a text with the word zone plus your name and address to 5606 and you will become an instant no zone club member. Come on everyone, let's say goodbye. Bye.